Good afternoon, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alberto Padova. I'm the chief of the uh, Social Inclusion and Participation Branch in the Division for Social in uh, Inclusion and Policies in the Department of Economic and Social Affairs. And it's a real pleasure to welcome you all to this event uh, organized by IFFD. This has become a uh, tradition. This is the seventh such briefing that uh, IFFD organizes this year in collaboration with the missions of Qatar, the mission of Hungary, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, uh, and the Doha um, Institute for uh, Family, um, International Family. So, um, as you may have seen from the program, we have uh, outstanding panelists uh, that will uh, discuss uh, the topic of um, Target 5.4, the value of unpaid care and domestic work. Is it utopia? Um, but before uh, um, uh, starting the panel discussion, we have uh, the honor to have um, Her Excellency um, uh, Sheikh Ali Ahmed bin Saif Al Thani, the permanent representative of Qatar, who will give us some uh, opening remarks. Ambassador, you, the floor thank, is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for very much for offering us this opportunity. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very much, of course, honored to welcome all of you today at this very important side event, which addresses one of the priorities of the state of Qatar and the field of promotion of gender equality and empowerment of women. And I would like to express, um, <coughs> express my gratitude to the International Federation for, fam uh, for the Family for their dedication, IFFD of course, for their dedication uh, to promoting and supporting the role of the family as the basic unit uh, of society. I would like also to, to welcome and thank uh, our partners in organizing this event, of course, uh, namely the uh, permanent mission of Hungary, um, uh, to the United Nations, the Doha International Family Institute, and of course, UNDESA. Uh, my gratitude is also ex um, extended to the distinguished moderator uh, and panelists whom I trust will broaden our perspective and enrich our knowledge on ways and approaches to recognizing the value uh, of uh, <coughs> unpaid care and domestic work. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we all agree that the creation of a supportive and caring work environment conducive to promoting work-family balance for working parents, especially women, has a significant role in achieving gender equality and empowerment of women to actively participate in various spheres of public uh, life. Therefore, the state of Qatar has been working uh, relentlessly uh, through Qatar National Vision 2030 and the national development strategies to enact and implement family-oriented legislations, policies, and programs that takes into consideration the importance of recognizing and valuing unpaid care and domestic work through the provision of public services, infrastructure, and social protection policies, and the promotion of shared responsibility within the household and the family. We are uh, nowadays <coughs> witnessing a wave of change in the state of Qatar with a, an agenda for achieving gender equality and a balance between work and family, which encompasses equal pay for work of equal value, uh, a breastfeeding friendly workplace and child friendly working hours, maternity, paternity leaves, and provisions of childcare facilities at the workplace, promotion of shared responsibility within the household and the family, and other ways of helping parents and their child and elderly care. I would like also to congratulate the International Federation um, for, Ho for Home Economics for receiving the IFFD award for the long-standing tradition of improving the quality of everyday life for individuals, households, and communities. My congratulations are ex extended as well to the government of Austria for the long-standing tradition and continuity in helping families in fulfilling their role through social policies and programs. Um, I will stop here, and I thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to be part of this discussion. Thank you very much, um, Ambassadors, both for setting the stage for the discussion to follow, but also to share, for sharing with us uh, the progress made uh, by uh, the government of Qatar in this very important area of, of uh, family care. 
So, uh, without further ado, I'd like now to um, start uh, the panel discussion. And uh, our, the first um, speaker on my list is uh, Regina Maroncelli. She is the president of the European Large Families Confederation, which is an umbrella organization gathering 24 large families associations from 22 countries in Europe. Uh, Regina, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to be here in, uh, in the reign of utopia, like uh, as it is at the United States. Um, I'm a mother of four children and I am a volunteer. Last, time, last year I became uh, um, the president of ELFAC, the European Large Family Confederation, that was born in 2004 to support the rights of families with three and more children to protect a family I, I'm sorry, I'm a volunteer and I am quite a messy volunteer. This means that I, I have the wrong, uh, <laughs> the wrong speech with me. But what I wanted to say is that I, um, the uh, European Large Family Confederation was born uh, to protect the rights of large families, fa um, of large families, those families with three or more children that have become almost uh, um, uh, a, a species in uh, extinction. Um, in, uh, for the forthcoming uh, European elections, our confederation has, um, proposing, is proposing five uh, uh, demands. Among them, uh, one is about uh, considering uh, um, the recognition of unpaid work. Um, and we, can see, we ask uh, that it would be calculated in the GDP, as it is already done for many various activities, including prostitution. Uh, it may seem a paradox to monetize something that is priceless, the gift of time and personal energy uh, for the well-being of others, but this is today language and we have to deal with it. Uh, unpaid invisible domestic work uh, is the most noble and valuable job we can do. It gives a sense to our lives. It is fundamental for each person and cannot be replaced by any institution or professional aid. It makes us feel uh, valuable, welcome and loved. It means strong, true relationships and has uh, a positive outcomes for the whole society. In a large family, uh, family um, care work and unpaid care work has a huge impact. It requires organization, multitasking competences, and several soft skills. Among other things, I'm a cook, a maid, a driver, a nurse, a psychologist, a personal shopper, mm -hmm. travel agent, and event organizer. It has been calculated that I could earn something like 3,500 US dollars. In Italy, it's a very good uh, pay. I have no holidays, no sick days. I enjoy no maternity leaves. I'm not going to receive a pension. I knew well uh, what, it, what it would have been uh, when I chose to become a not working mom uh, when my third child was born. What I did not know, but I soon experienced, that was that my choice was not popular at all. Uh, I felt in many occasions that if I were my, child, my children's babysitter, I would raise more respect and consideration. Being a just a mother was not enough. Uh, even if um, my husband and I were investing on human capital, I soon understand, understood that if you don't produce, you don't exist and you become invisible. And that's not a good feeling. I live in a part of Italy where the rates of working women are similar to those of Nordic countries. Uh, social disapproval on staying home mother is strong, but the economic pressure can be unbearable. Taxation is built to prevent single earners families. Parents are pushed to work outside the house full time. Children are very little considered in this and their building, uh, well-being is not taken in account. Um, many times I realize, and, and studies, recent studies um, can demonstrate that um, having children and uh, being able to take care of them at home is something reserved either to very poor or to very rich people. 
and that sounds very unfair and unjust to me. Uh, everyone should be able to choose. I see the paradox of putting children in long hours early education center and let our dears uh, to work outside the house uh, with somebody who is working, leaving their own children and parents and beloved at home. Uh, I see the paradox of migrants leaving their houses, children and parents to follow rich people's children and parents. In the name of economy, we risk to slip into another kind of a slavery that is stealing us the very best of human being. Maternity, paternity, caring of people we love, leaving no one behind. A uh, measure to enable um, a country to uh, recognize invisible work exists. Uh, it up only to the uh, uh, imagination and creativity of each country to use them and to, um, and to provide services uh, to fulfill that um, gap that is uh, uh, between uh, those uh, that work and, and have double occupancy inside and outside the house. For example, in Poland, <laughs> we have, uh, uh, there is a bonus pension, uh, but to provide a wage and uh, um, the sufficient um, independent um, mean uh, for those uh, who are uh, working at home uh, full time. So uh, we need a, a big change of perspective. Uh, maybe it's a topic, but a family-friendly environment where to do so, it's possible. We are um, experiencing it with, a social, uh, with a many uh, good practices. And so I think we, we can start uh, dreaming because we can do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Regina, not only for um, describing in very powerful terms uh, the job description of a, a ca family carer, and, uh, but also um, to, for reminding us that really we should uh, measure what we treasure and not just things as uh, prostitution or gambling, which are already included and reflected in, in GDP. So thank you for that. The next speaker on my list is Anis Benbrick. He's the Director of Family Policy at the Doha International Family Institute. Ben, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pietro, and uh, we are very proud to uh, collaborate with uh, IFFB to organize this important and timely uh, event on, um, on the value of unpaid care and domestic work. Uh, in my presentation, I'll start uh, briefly talking about what at stake, the economic value of unpaid work. Then I will provide some insights from the Middle East and North Africa region in terms of uh, the state of unpaid uh, care and domestic work. And then finish my presentation uh, by providing some recommendation on how civil society organizations contribute to promoting gender equality. Uh, so briefly, as you know, uh, there is a, a, a broader consensus uh, that women's empowerment underpins the achievement and the success of sustainable development. Also, gender equality is a matter of human rights. Uh, uh, in economic terms, overcoming gender disparity would result in additional $12 trillion in annual GDP in 2025, according to recent uh, uh, estimation by McKinsey. At the regional level, at the Middle East and North Africa, the regional output generated by women is only 18%, according to the uh, recent estimation by the World Bank, although women constitute uh, an average 50% of the population. Also, in the Middle East, boosting uh, female labor participation would contribute to 85% of the total additional economic opportunities in the region. Yeah. So what's the economic uh, uh, value of unpaid care? According to the estimation of ILO in 2018, unpaid care account to $10 trillion. Uh, uh, or 
13% of the US GDP, according to very conservative costing uh, assumption. Uh, however, unpaid care work because I started my presentation talking about female labor participation and how women still, at least in the, in the uh, Middle East, lagging behind. So one of the cause of the low female participation is unpaid care work. So unpaid care work is the main barrier preventing women from getting into remaining and progressing in the labor force. The ILO in the recent report, 2018, estimated that uh, there is 600 million working age women that they are not able to do so because of the unpaid care work, compared to only 41 million men who are not able, who are not in the labor force for the same reason. So as, uh, as you can see the figure, the Middle East region has the lowest uh, uh, rate of labor force participation. And as I mentioned, one of the reasons uh, uh, is the unpaid care, uh, unpaid care work. Uh, as you can see the second, uh, f the second figure, uh, you can see clearly there is a huge gap, gender gap at work around many Arab countries, Jordan, Iraq, Morocco, uh, for the same reasons. So unpaid work. Uh, across the world, without exception, uh, women perform three-quarters of unpaid work, according to the estimation of the uh, World Bank. And as you can see, in the, uh, uh, with focus on the Arab states, women in the Middle East and North Africa spend almost five times in unpaid care work than men. So in summary, in the Arab region, women still continue to carry the double burden of paid and unpaid workloads. Uh, this burden also uh, uh, is complicated by social class. In poor rural and urban areas, women work longer hours than men, spend more time on unpaid care work uh, and work in agriculture, and have, uh, have less time to engage in paid work uh, or social and cultural activity. So what are the reasons of uh, uh, this gender gap? Uh, I can cite uh, uh, at least three primary factors uh, 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 inhibit the gender equality uh, in the Middle East. The first reason or the first challenge and barrier is adverse social norms. Social norms uh, as you know, shapes women's decision regarding occupational and education opportunity. They affect the distribution of unpaid work within her household, and they re reflect and reinforce discriminatory gender stereotypes, implicit biases, which limit women's pay and promotion. The second factor, uh, very relevant to many regions, um, but most importantly to the Arab region, is the discriminatory laws and insufficient legal protection. Sometimes, adverse social norms in the Middle East are also codified in laws that limit women's professional choice and their ability to obtain, uh, for example, the public documents, uh, travel outside their homes, etc. And the last uh, factor, which is unequal uh, uh, access to digital, financial, and property assets. Uh, so, uh, let's look to the, to the social norm. How important to reshape the narrative, to, to change. So I'll finish. Uh, so this is an example of how social norms affecting uh, uh, unpaid work. So finally, I, I was asked, so what are the role, of, the role of civil society in pushing forward gender equality? So the first role, as I can see it here, is uh, uh, tackling adverse norms changing the narratives, the stereotypes, through education, awareness raising programs. Uh, gender roles and norms must be challenged if care work to be valid and, and, uh, and uh, shared through education, information. Uh, I cited many examples of uh, uh, international initiative, uh, like the Global Fatherhood Initiative. The second uh, role of civil society is supporting 
evidence-based policy making. This is what DFI is doing. We, we conduct research to support evidence-based policies to change norms, to promote new paradigms, to promote evidence-based policies. Uh, uh, so for instance, uh, what, we, we, what uh, civil society can do is to provide evidence to bridge the gap between the local community, families concern, researchers and policymakers to voice the community, to provide data, to provide insights from families, from women, to shape uh, policy uh, making uh, processes through, for instance, uh, folks on the provision of childcare uh, or what we call the care policies. The third uh, 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 role uh, with more folks on, on the UN is building coalition, working, creating networks, building coalition of NGOs, uh, partnership with local institution, with media institution, religious institution, religious leader, traditional leaders, to promote new norms, uh, to change societal uh, uh, values. Uh, and I cited many, uh, many examples uh, of uh, international partnership. So briefly, this is what we do in DFI. Uh, uh, sorry, just uh, promoting my organization. So in DFI, we do all of this. We promote evidence-based policies. We are conducting research on work family uh, policies. We just finished uh, a study on Qatar looking to the state of work family policies, practices in Qatar. We also organized since 2009, we organized many advocacy events around unpaid care, et cetera. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anis, for uh, both um, uh, highlighting very clearly the role of gender in any discussion on unpaid care, but also for bringing a perspective from uh, your region, uh, the, uh, the Middle East, as well as for uh, uh, um, pointing out what actions civil society can actually take in, in this context. So the third and uh, uh, final um, panelist in, uh, uh, in this discussion is Mario Armella, who is the world president of the International Federation for Family Development, who will uh, bring the perspective of the private sector. Mario, you have the floor. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as president of IFFD, let me first thank the permanent mission of the state of Qatar to the United, United Nations, the permanent mission of Hungary to the United Nations, the United Nations Division for Inclusive Social Development and the Doha International Family Institute for their partnership in organizing this event and especially to Her Excellency Sheikha Ali Ahmed bin Saif Altani and Her Excellency Ambassador Kathleen Ana Maria Bohiai for honoring us today with their presence here and their insightful remarks. I also want to thank Sharifa Noam Emadi for her presence here, as well as congratulate her for her new position as Executive Director of the Doha International Family Institute. Also, Mr. Alberto Padova, not only for being here today and accepting our offering to moderate this event, but also for his constant effort to achieve these objectives. And I want to take this opportunity to confirm once more our commitment to help the whole United Nations system in this task with the collaboration of our more than 250 family enrichment centers and more than 8,000 volunteers in 70 countries. The International Federation for Family Development has been holding the IFF briefing at the UN headquarters in New York during the session of the Commission for Social Development since 2013. When we started, side events on family topics were much fewer than these last years. We consider this as a significant sign that shows how family is every day more present in the development agenda and so welcome it by, with joy. After all, this is the only objective of our presence in the United Nations, to show how important a family perspective is for the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. One of the most important goals is number five, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Among its targets, one is particularly related to our work with parents. It deals with the recognition of unpaid care and domestic work and the promotion of shared responsibility within the household and the family. 
As many other studies and statistics, our experience shows that women do more of such work than men. This unequal distribution of unpaid care work between women and men represents an infringement of women's rights and also a break on their economic empowerment. Time is a limited resource, which is divided between labor and leisure, productive and reproductive activities, paid and unpaid work. Every minute more than a woman spends on unpaid care work represents one minute less that she could be potentially spending on market-related activities or, investigating or, or investing in her educational and vocational skills. This creates a double burden of work for women that can become even a triple burden if we consider the care of children. Let me speak now as an architect who works in the private sector running an architect's office in a big city like Mexico and has to deal with a full staff made from different jobs and tasks. I totally agree with a recent Harvard study that the so-called working parents problem should be at the top of employers' priority list, list. If we don't want to miss those brilliant talents who go through the overwhelming challenge of trying to earn a living and build a career while also parenting well. For organizations and people in positions of leadership, it refers to the challenge of effective employing and fully unleashing the potential of the folks who are trying to navigate the demands of work and family. In the current economic and cultural landscape, what I prefer to call the working parent challenge has moved up to the forefront of leadership concerns, and it's going to stay there. Ignored, it can become a powerful and insidious threat to your team and organization's success. Why focusing on working parents is so important? First, because the demographic issue is huge. If you're having serious trouble finding the talent you need, it's probably time to start paying attention to ways you can attract this huge pool of working mothers and fathers, retain them, and ensure they deliver uh, at work. Second, because those, those men and women carry much heavier loads than previous generations have. Today's working parents are three times more likely on average to be part of dual career couples or to be single than they are to spouses at home full time. That means the majority of committed working parents and employees have no slack in their system, no one to whom they can hand off the school pickup or pediatrician visit or TPM or 10 p.m. feeding. And as wonderful as many technological changes are, some have also made working parenthood harder. iPhone in hand, there's no reason or excuse to ever be off of work, even during the parent-teacher conference or family dinner. That is why I totally agree with the founder and CEO of work parent, Daisy Waitman Dowling, when she proposes this set of recommendations. One, demonstrate personal support for working parent employees in a high visible way. Definite your, your, define your organization's working parent challenge from the frontline employee perspective through both a quantitative and qualitative <coughs> basis. Engage allies within and outside of the human resources team to identify and execute on solutions. Four, take a comprehensive approach rather than relying on silver bullet solutions. Five, support and help to shape grassroots employee-led solutions such as peer-to-peer -peer working parent mentoring programs or family enrichment courses as the ones IFFD offers. Out six, and last, out-communicate the competition when it com comes to working parent matters. Every leader and organization will find different ways to solve the working parent challenge according to the social and legal situation. But as with, uh, as with any challenge, acknowledging its reality, size, and nature is always the right place to start. And I sincerely hope we are contributing to it with this briefing today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mario, both for uh, um, pointing the finger to this uh, working parent challenge, but also for providing very concrete uh, policy recommendations that we should uh, um, consider and put forward. Um, 
we have a, several uh, representatives of civil society organizations that uh, would like to uh, um, make some brief uh, statements. And the first one on my list is Melinda Balint, who is the uh, Director of International Relations of the National Association of Large Families of Hungary. Melinda. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Melinda Bálint uh, from NOE, Nagy Családosok Országos Egyesülete, means um, National Association of Large Families in Hungary. Um, and uh, yes, our statement is um, firstly uh, on behalf of my association that was awarded by uh, the IFFD last year. I would like to congratulate all organizations receiving the IFFD Family Award <coughs> this year. Um, the topic of today's event, unpaid work, is especially important for the members of our association. In the Hungarian language, we refer to unpaid work as invisible work because most of us recognize its value only when it's, this type of duty is not performed. In Hungary, as well as in other parts of the world, women spend a lot more time on domestic world, work and on family care than men. And although there is a slight increase in the time men spent on housekeeping, there is no real progress in the burden sharing of childcare. We at NOAA believe that the value of unpaid work lies in its personalized nature. In the world of, un of paid work, basically anybody can be substituted, while care duties affecting personal connections cannot be and should not be outsourced rather recognized as a contribution for the well-being of our societies. We are therefore committed to make invisible unpaid work visible as well as paid and unpaid work reconcilable. Thank you so much. Uh, next on my list is Nicola Speranza, uh, Federation of Catholic Family Associations, the Secretary General of Italy. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is very encouraging to see uh, NGOs, state representatives, and the UN uh, working together to make uh, the target uh, 5.4 into in transforming it into reality. And I take also take advantage to, to congratulate with Ambassador Boggia for the presentation of the action plan from, for the family by your government uh, uh, in, these, in these days, which is a really good example of how to make uh, a family, put family in the center of uh, government policy. Uh, I represent 26 Catholic-inspired uh, family associations in Europe. Uh, within the, the European institutions, we keep reminding that the family is the natural key player in promoting social inclusion. Uh, and that's what uh, uh, we did also recently at the Council of Europe, which now recognizes, uh, the Parliamentary as Assembly recognizes the value of unpaid and the family care work uh, uh, for the calculation of pension sch um, schemes. So it's very important. We are working on, on this issue for a long time, and we got a really transversal po cross political from all political groups. So that we, we really see that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subject which can unite and uh, in which many, many people could see a, a, a good path forward for the future uh, in, in a uh, context which is demographically very, very uh, concerning uh, many times. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Next on my list is Anna Margarita Romero, the director of the Instituto della Familia dell'Università della Sabana, Colombia. Mm, well, mm, the Family Institute of the Universidad de la Sabana and the ReadyFam, the network of Latin American universities with Institutos de la Familia, um, we have a very big challenge through the academic knowledge uh, to societies. We offer an online master in family counseling and, and work on research areas like domestic violence, work and family balance, disabilities, uh, young people's lifestyles, poverty and gender, among others. Uh, each semester, uh, we have undergraduate students uh, in a core curriculum program where they study how to build their life project. Um, our investigations shows every time 
more necessary communication strategies that promotes more participation on unpaid uh, domestic and care work. To reduce domestic violence, uh, there is a need of education and cultural aspects in many cases are barriers for changes. We need more international and academic studies for public policy guidelines. For that, there is a need of working together and having special funds, special funds for investigations, and helping professors in Latin American countries to have access to PhD programs. Thank you. Next, Caroline Rue, uh, Deputy Director General, uh, De Delegate General of Alliance Vita of France. Thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, I am director of uh, the international branch of Alliance Vita, and my organization is focused on uh, health and well-being as um, early childhood development. And we have a counseling uh, experience dedicated to parents and future parents. Free choice of uh, balancing family life and work is a great concern, uh, especially for women with children at early age. And uh, that's why creating the social conditions of a flexible presence at home allows economical savings on health, social, and educational expenses. So we call states to recognize and value unpaid care and free domestic work on the same grounds as professional experience, ensuring thereby flexible life decisions so that women are not prejudiced when they wish to re-enter the labor market. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. And last speaker on, on this list is Madeleine Wallin, the uh, Vice President of the European Federation of Parents and Carers at Home of Sweden. Yes, my name is Madeleine Wallin. I come from Sweden and I'm the General Secretary of FIFAF, uh, European Federation of Parents and Carers at Home which main issue is to value the unpaid caregiving work. The word economy means home, but the value of a home and a strong family isn't included in the economic systems. Unpaid work is not part of the national accounts, and in the UN system of national accounts, it's written that, it's of, that it is of little or no importance. What we measure affects what we do. If we measure the wrong thing, we will do the wrong thing. If we don't measure something, it becomes neglected, which is exactly the case of the unpaid work, mainly performed by women all over the world. In many countries, we redistribute unpaid work and force separations between children and mothers just to make the care count. If another woman care for my child, it is suddenly valued. The question is, do we get the same outcome? It is time to improve the economic systems so it's a benefit to people rather than to the system itself. Or as Magdalena Sepulveda, a UN Special Rapporteur says, Women's economic empowerment is a mirage if we ignore unpaid work done at home. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all for all the, the inspiring statements. Now we have 15 minutes for a, a question and answer session before we move to uh, the awards ceremony. So who would like to open? I see. Hands over there. Eve Sullivan, Parents Forum, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Thank you. I am indeed inspired and want to share a brief text exchange that I had with my colleague in the National Parenting Education Network. When I told her the title of the session, she said, oh, not very interesting. <clears throat> And I explained to her that, in fact, the topic was what parents do, and oftentimes, most times, for, for no money and for little recognition. And my text back to her was, 
I would have liked a badge or something, you know, that said PSC, parent with small child, or a reserved parking space at the supermarket, just as there are HP um, parking spots. I, there's a massive reorientation of public consciousness, and we're part of it. So I'm, I'm very heartened by today's conversations, and I'm going to write to The Economist, and I'm going to tell them in their next World Facts book, let them count the value of unpaid labor and what parenting education and support programs are provided country by country. Qatar would come out very high, I'm sure, um, and perhaps also Hungary. I don't think the U.S. would do well at all, but I'm working to change that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Well, I guess the uh, presentations were all very clear, and <laughs> now we're digesting and uh, ready to uh, follow the recommendations we heard. So, as I don't see other uh, requests for the floor, I would then uh, move to uh, the award ceremony. And I am very pleased to have uh, Sharifa Norman El Abmadi to uh, be the, uh, the uh, um, MC in this phase of the event. It's working? Yeah. OK. Uh, start. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like uh, to begin by thanking the uh, International Federation for Family Development for organizing this important briefing on a fundamental topic of the value of unpaid care and domestic work is targeted 5.4 uh, Utopia, which we, the Doha International Family Institution, are proud to co-organize it with our partners. The, permanent, uh, the permanent, uh, permanent mission of the State of Qatar to the United Nations, uh, UDASA, the Division for in Inclusive Social Development, the International Federation for Home Economics. In fact, our uh, journey with the IFFD began years ago. We have worked together in many occasions in advocating the family matters at the United Nations level. We succeeded as a parents, uh, partner sorry, in putting forth uh, the, uh, the acknowledgement of the family as a contribution, uh, contributor to the overall development uh, through numerous U United Nations documents and the platforms. These offers would have not been uh, successful without the support of the permission mission of, the Qatar, of Qatar to the United Nations New York. One of the examples of our effectiveness partnership is the pre uh, preparation for the comm comm commemoration of the 20th anniversary of the International Year of the Family, which DP hosted in Doha in 2014 and was commenced by Her Highness Sheikh Moza bin Nasser, Chairperson for Qatar Foundation for Education, Science and Community Development. Recently, DV and IFFT joined force uh, on multiple projects, including expert group meetings, Doha briefing, and side event, and most recently, the civil society meeting held in preparation of the Doha International Conference on Parenting, Child Wellbeing, and Development, which focused on the role of civil society in promoting parental support and resulted in a civil society statement on parenting. In its work to promote family matters, IFFT has com continued for the past seven years to recognize persons or initiatives who have supported family values around the world through the IFFT Family Award Ceremony. Previous awards have included the governments of Malta and Malaysia and the Nation National Association of Large uh, Families of Hungary. Uh, during the same time last year, IFFD award was pr uh, presented to DFI. 
in its role as a global policy and advocacy institute working to provide evidence and raise awarenesses in the regional and international levels and promoting family perspective policies while advocating for family issues at the United Nations. This year, IFFD have invited me to present the Family Award to the International Federation for Home Economics. The International Federation for Home Economics have a, pro a profound history. The Federation was founded in 1908 to serve as a platform for international exchange within the field of home economics. IFFD, uh, IFHE has advocated for the ad, ad, uh, advancement of the pro protection of family while uh, aiming to improve the quality of everyday life of families, individuals and householders alike. They have uh, undertaken this task through the exchange of uh, knowledge and experience on families and for families. They are international in nature allowing for a wider scope of work, especially, uh, specifically when advocating for family well-being as the basic infrastructure for all other forms of social and economic development. I am proud to state that DIFI has collaborated with the IFHE, who represented it uh, one of the civil society organizations that co-drafted and partnered with uh, DFI on the civil society statement on parenting. And I look forward to future collaborative efforts between all our organizations as we continue to advocate for the family. With that, I'm pleased to present this year IFFD Family Award to the International Federation for Home Economics. Please join me in congratulating representative by Anita Firo. Sorry, it's still, I'm not familiar with the, all the names of the organization, <laughs> so sorry for that. Thank you. Well, this is quite this is quite an honor, Madam Chair, Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. We, representatives of the civil society organizations of the Doha International Family Institute, the International Federation of Family Development, World Family Organization, International Federation for Home Economists, focus on the family Malaysia. Fathers in Africa, Nagala Parenting with Confidence, European Large Families Confederation, and Parents Forum. Having considered the evidence of how important positive parenting is for the health, education, poverty, eradication, and the overall well-being outcomes of children, including adolescents, supporting the families, parents, and caregivers, in their crucial role in social development is key for the education and socialization of children, especially those in vulnerable situations. Having recognized its role in the development, the family is supported by an array of UN documents as a fundamental group unit of society that is entitled to the protection by society and the state and as a crucial contributor towards the achievement of the SDGs, especially by breaking the international cycle of poverty, recognizing and valuing unpaid care and domestic work, and creating a just, inclusive, and secure societies. Therefore, we call on governments, national and international organizations, academic and research institutions, donors and the private sector to support families, parents and caregivers everywhere by, one, enabling work-family balance for flexible working and leave arrangements, parental leave, affordable, accessible, and quality child care, and initiatives to promote shared responsibility at home. Two, investing in parenting education programs, considering various parenting needs and dimensions. Three, 
making the well-being of parents, children, and other caregivers explicit objectives of parenting policies and programs. Four, investing in program evaluations and impact assessments of parenting policies and programs so parenting and child well-being can be better understood by all stakeholders. <clears throat> Number five, recognizing the contribution of men to families and the developing policies to address the consequences of their absences. Six, acknowledging the contributions of grandparents to parenting and intergenerational relations, living arrangements, and inclusive urbanization and social cohesion. And number seven, our last, creating an enabling environment for meaningful contributions of civil society organizations in the design, the implementation, and monitoring of family policies and programs, removing barriers to the establishment, work, and funding of the non-governmental organizations. I want to thank you very much on behalf of the International Federation of Home Economists. This is what we do. We work with families. Thank you. Viviana Gutierrez, the co-president of International Federation for Family Development, to present the second award. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, child policy has always been of high importance in Austria. Because of this, Austria has one of the most developed systems of family benefits. Families are the foundations of society. They respect and support them in all different forms. Families render valuable services for children and care for dependently, dependent family members, thereby furthering social cohesion and the living together of different generations. For this reason, family policy is very important in a rapidly changing society. Families need time. In Austria, the reconciliation of work and family life for women and men is of central concern. Financial support of other forms of support as well as the creation of an optimal framework and infrastructure like child care are of high importance. The reconciliation of work and family life not only affects every individual, but is also an economic and social challenge. The well-being of the child must thereby be of central concern. They aim to create a child and family friendly work environmental environment and to provide families with, with developmental possibilities. Today, men perceive their roles differently than fathers of previous generations. Austria supports an active fatherhood and encourage a modern role perception between fathers and mothers. The broad exchange at European level facilitates the exchange of inter international best practices and the use of these for extra for Austria. Internationally, Austria ranks very high in terms of financial support for families, but in material supports for families such as pater pater parental devel developmental family counseling and family research are supported by the ministry as well. Family policy is concerned with the creation of a legal, social, and economic framework, framework as well as instruments and measures that support family de de development and the well-being of family life. Family policy is linked to social policy, dem demograph demographic policy, gender, men, women, and children's rights policy, or employment, educational, and tax policy. The division, families, and youth, with, which was allocated to the Federal Ministry of Family of Youth, has been taken over by the Federal Chancellery on January the 8th of, of 2018. The International Board of the IFFD has decided this division, families, and youth, in the Federal Chancellery of the Austrian Government to be granted one of the 2019 IFFD awards for the long-standing tradition 
and continuity of helping families in fulfilling their role through social policies and programs established and improved since the introduction of the Family Fund more than 60 years ago. So this award will be to Austria. And now Katharina Konzestoffel, the uh, Councillor of the Permanent Mission of Austria, will say a few words. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I would like to thank the International Federation for Family Development for the award granted to Austria this year in recognition of our continuous efforts to support families through social policies and programs. We have around 1,125,000 families with children living in Austria. Families are the foundation of our society, and we respect and we support them in all their different forms. Families render valuable services for children and care for dependent family members, thereby furthering social cohesion and the living together of different generations. The aim of the government is to create a legal, social, and economic framework and to implement measures that support family development and the well-being of the family overall. Austria has one of the most developed systems of family benefits and is known as one of the front runners among the European countries. We provide a combination of financial benefits, in-kind benefits, as well as tax benefits, such as the new Family Bonus Plus. 10% of the federal budget is invested to directly benefit families. The Family Burden Equalization Fund is financing a variety of benefits, such as family allowances, childcare allowances, free transportation for pupils, free school books, family counseling centers, as well as parental education. In Austria, the reconciliation of work and family life for women and men is of central concern. We are constantly working on providing an optimal framework of financial support and infrastructure, in particular also childcare. With a solid infrastructure for children three years and older already in place, we will now put a reinforced focus on expanding childcare for children under three years of age. Raising awareness for work and family life balance, including through public-private partnerships, form also part of our strategy. Austria champions an active fatherhood and also encourages a modern role perception between fathers and mothers, including through various parental leave models. The child and youth welfare system promotes the rights of children and adolescents, supports their development and their education, and aims at protecting them from all forms of violence. Austria's comprehensive policy approach also plays an important role in our national efforts to achieve the sustainable development goals. In concluding, let me stress that we see this award as an appreciation of our work in support of families, but also, and more importantly, as an encouragement to continue this path. Thank you very much. Congratulations, uh, uh, Katharina, and to uh, your country for leading the way in this area. And now it's uh, my privilege to uh, give the floor for uh, some closing remarks to the 
um, permanent representative of Hungary, Her Excellency Ambassador Catalina Anne Marie Bogier. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I always feel that we are um, amongst family members whenever we meet in uh, this circle. We know each other, we are interested in each other, we are encouraged by each other, and we are always listening to good and new and uh, inspiring models. Um, today is a very busy day in the UN, I must say. I was just chairing the, uh, the big conference on girls and women in science. Uh, we have our UN women uh, meeting for two days. Actually, the president of the export was also here. I saw her, probably the ambassador left already. And um, uh, the topic what we are talking about here uh, has been uh, mentioned in all the meetings. Um, of course, um, when I say that we are family here, it also means that all the key players, uh, uh, my very dear friend, the permanent representative of Qatar, the International Federation for Family Development, the Doha International Family <laughs> Institute, the International Federation for Home Economics, are all uh, really interested how they could help, how they could their ideas mo be make more visible in the UN system. Because this is how I take that. You, you come here every day and you talk about your experiences and you try to get more and more supporters. And we are getting uh, more and more member states being interested in what we are doing. Uh, obviously, it was... Um, a great privilege for uh, Hungary last year. I have uh, my uh, uh, country woman uh, friend here representing the Hungarian Association of the Large Families, and it was a privilege last year to uh, get the award. And uh, as you mentioned, sir, uh, yes, um, uh, the support, supportive system uh, for families has been very much in the center of my government policies. And just exactly two days ago, my prime minister um, announced uh, the development of this system. I was so happy to listen to the, the two awardees. Congratulations to Austria and to the um, International Federation for Home Economics. Great examples. And of course, with Austria being at the neighbor uh, uh, hood, uh, we've been uh, both valuing really seriously the role of the family. Now, what I wanted just to say that the, the title of this meeting is, is it a utopia? And actually, uh, there were times in lives when everything, you know, sort of seemed to be a utopia. And I just would like to say that uh, if we work enough strongly and concentrated and uh, in collaboration with each other, it will not be a utopia. Because we have results. We have results in different countries. We just heard a great example of Austria. But um, if I may also say that in my country, we have got great results. and. Um, uh, the result means that for a woman and for a man, for a family, the question is how they can juggle, <coughs> right? Because this is today, it's, it's really how you juggle with your time and how you can raise your children, but also um, uh, have your career, have your work if you are interested. Now, I want to say that I'm coming a little bit from another direction because I was brought up behind the Iron Curtain. And you see, that time, everyone had to work. So it was not even a question for a woman to go to work or not. I remember I finished university, and my mother was very worried because I didn't have a job in July, and I had to start in September because it was compulsory. So. After the political changes in 1990, that was the first time that women could choose. 
we were always very jealous looking at Austria because I, I, I am I, my I have Austrian ties, so uh, I've seen the family there, and you know they could choose whether they stay at home or they go to work. So obviously, coming from this direction first, it was like freedom related to the choice of women. And I would like to keep it that way as well, because I think it's very important that if a woman decides to stay at home, to raise family, to raise the children, to, to collaborate in, 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 in family life with the husband, with the grandparents, this is beautiful. That is why first Hungary, many decades ago, introduced um, the possibility for women to stay at home if they wish. So the, the support system uh, started with that really. The second, of course, is that I would have died if I had to stay at home, but this is something <laughs> personal. So then, then, then obviously there, there are different needs. There are different needs. So if a woman decides and discuss it with the husband and the family that, no, no, I would like to study, I would like to go and work, I would like to use my talent, what we've been talking about today, the whole day in the UN, you know, how, how to channel the talent, how to, how to free the talent, how to support the talent. So then what do we do? And here, I think, comes the support system. And that is why, for example, in my country, this is so important, and it is not a utopia anymore, that if you would like to have a child and you work somewhere, you can stay at home for three years. Still, your job has to be kept. Because that's the most difficult thing. You know, you go to work, you would like to give birth to your child, but then you are not... Uh, you know, you are afraid losing the job. So how do you do that? So we have a support system which helps you to, to stay at home if you wish and then to go back to your job. What I, for example, did as well, although it is risky. I mean, they are forgetting about you, of course, in three years or two years. But then you, ha you have to be uh, uh, creative and to find other ways. But what is, uh, this is a very important moment. The other thing, what has been just introduced, that we can choose in Hungary whether it's a, pa, uh, it's a, a maternal leave or a, a, a father can take this uh, uh, support. Because this is also very important. And it should be based on the discussion in the family, whether the mother or the father would like to stay uh, with the children or with the child, and how really they can support each other, because probably at the beginning, the mother will, will stay more at home, and then the father would take over. So I would like to say there are quite a few young people here. It's important to choose the right husband, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 the right the right wife, because it should be a collaboration in the family. I mean, you know, there, there is not work just for a woman or just for a man. Um, for example, also in, in, in I couldn't have survived without the support of my husband. We shared everything, and whoever had a little time did the washing up, you know. So, so no, this is very important that it's, everything, again, is based on choice and on collaboration. In, um, in my country, of course, this new uh, support system is very important because it is related to tax exemption, uh, if you have a big family, four children, then the women will never have to pay income taxes and so on. So uh, what is also very important, that first is mother, father, family, but then it's very important how the children are introduced to the communities. So that is why in a support system it's very important to concentrate on how the children will be integrated into the kindergarten, into the, 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 the schools, and how the mothers or fathers will be supported if, for example, they want to have part-time job. Be at home as well, but also uh, work. And this is also what is possible, for example, uh, in my country. I don't want to go, go into all the, all the different points, but I, I really would like to say that I feel um, uh, privilege that, uh, of course, last year the Minister of State was here talking about the concept of family-friendly uh, country. 
this we believe very much so that the, 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 the country is based on a good collaboration within the family. This is the first collaboration. And then if we can do it well, which is not easy, then of course we learn through that and hopefully we will be um, a good and, and, uh, and supportive member of our society as well. So in terms of care work, uh, paid maternal and paternal leave, child care benefits, job protection for mothers, flexible working arrangements, and quality, affordable child care services are all mutually reinforcing and necessary for women's empowerment and the well-being of all. Because the first year of a child defines the kind of adult the child grows up to be. I really believe, of course, it's a personal matter, but I always keep telling my young colleagues, try to stay at home as long as you can. Because you, if you decide, if you decide you would like to have a child, you have to give the time and, and, and understanding and support to your child. Okay, this, this is your decision. If you make this decision, you have to, you have to deal with that. Uh, and um, I also would like to say that uh, whenever really, uh, Ignatius, I see you, I know that you will not give up. You have wonderful partners. You have your friends. You have your, your organizations working and cooperating with you. And we are on board. I'm so happy that we are here now with the, uh, the ambassador of Qatar, and she brings all these amazing women from her country. I keep telling her, oh, not again, a fantastic woman from Qatar, because you have got so many initiatives. And you can see when, obviously, a government feels committed towards this cause. But one thing is the government, and one thing is us. So that is why I think that the role of education is something what matters so much, because the, the role models, what the children can see at home from the mother and the father, and what the teachers can teach them and help them raise the awareness of their future is very, very important. That's why I think all these topics are very strongly related to, to education. So I would like to, again, to congratulate uh, uh, to uh, the uh, awardees. I would like to wish you all the very best. And uh, I would like to wish uh, the representative of the Hungarian uh, Association of Large Families all the very best. I hope that these new uh, developments in my country will help you as well. We've been working with you very strongly together. And I really admire that there are families who have the strength and the bravery really to create big and bigger and bigger families. Because in the old times, it was just normal that grandparents and parents, they lived together, they supported each other. But then more and more, we, we, we found a solitude in this whole process. And it is much more difficult if you don't have grandparents. That is why, for example, now it is also possible in my country that if a grandmother would like to stay at home, will act as, uh, uh, as a supportive uh, member in the family, can do that, and will be supported by the government as well. So I would like to thank you for coming to the UN. I would like to thank you. Uh, for bringing uh, all the amazing panelists, and I hope that our family here in the UN related to this topic will also grow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador, not only to, for bringing a very personal perspective to the discussion today, uh, but also for that uh, priceless piece of advice that I hope uh, many in the audience will, uh, will, will remember. And finally, for uh, uh, responding with a resounding no to the question of whether Target 5.4 is utopia. I think that uh, we have heard very clear uh, indications today from many of the speakers and from the countries and the champions of these, uh, on these issues that uh, you uh, represent and Ambassador uh, from Qatar and Austria represent that really 
uh, it is not utopia. Uh, many uh, countries have led the way, and it's really up for others to, to follow a suit on, on these policies and for civil society at large to support these efforts as much as uh, they can so that uh, it becomes a reality for all. We at the UN are also very much involved and uh, working towards the realization of the entire agenda, but including target 5.4. In fact, I would invite uh, all participants here to follow the work of the Statistical Commission next uh, month, where the issue of going beyond GDP uh, will be uh, discussed. So at this point, I can only thank all the speakers, uh, the organizers, of course, Ignacio and IFFD for their in invaluable uh, efforts and uh, tradition to bring together all these uh, um, outstanding people uh, every year in the context of the CISOCD. Uh, so keep up the good work, and we're uh, counting on, on seeing you again uh, very soon in another um, wonderful uh, event like this one. Thank you again to everyone.